Okay, in this section we're going to talk about the algebra of functions. So we'll talk about the algebra of functions. And all this is, all this is, is a fancy way for us to talk about addition, subtraction, multiplication, division of functions. So remember going back to probably maybe a semester or two prior to this, we probably talked about combining like terms. This is very similar to combining like terms. Uh, the best way that I can go about trying this is to, is to show you the rules and to demonstrate some examples. So we're going to say let f of x and g of x exist as independent functions. So they can be any functions, independent functions. They can be any function, independent, there we go, sorry for that. Independent functions. So, so for example, for example, we could say that f of x is equal to 2x plus 5. And then we could say that g of x, we, I'll do g of x in a different color, g of x is equal to, we'll say g of x is equal to uh, x minus 4. So we'll say g of x will be equal to x minus 4. And notice they are separate. So f of x and g of x are separate from each other. They are not the same function. So now what we can do is that we can talk about the four different rules, the rules that we're going to have to follow. And, and there's nothing that's very complex about these rules. It's just a formal way of us talking about combining two functions. So we'll talk about, first of all, the addition rule. So we'll say f plus g and the notation will be f plus g like this of x will be equal to the independent function f of x plus the independent, fu independent function g of x. So looking at this example, all we're going to do is add 2x plus 5 and then we have to add, which I'm going to keep in black, we're going to add, which is this portion right here, x minus 4 and notice this is the reason why I said it's like combining like terms because now we're going to have 2x plus x which gives you a value of 3x 5 minus 4 gives you a value of positive 1 so this will be equal to f plus g of x which is our first rule our, our next rule our next rule is going to be what happens when we subtract these functions and we're going to denote that nomenclature by f minus g all in parentheses f minus g all in parentheses of x this by definition will be equal to f of x minus g of x. And all we're going to do now, we're going to keep the same exact method by plugging in our 2x plus 5. But I'm going to plug in my second guy. I'm going to plug in a second guy. And I'm going to emphasize here that we're going to put in a separate set of brackets or parentheses around the second guy. Because whenever I see a subtraction, I always have to worry about distribution. So I'm going to put in a, a bracket here. And we're going to subtract off this x minus 4. And then we're going to close this bracket. Because I recognize that this negative sign has to be distributed to not only the x, but also the negative 4. So now this will simplify into 2x plus 5. But we're going to have minus x plus 4. So we have to make sure to to distribute that negative to both of those two terms. And now this will be just us combining similar terms. So we're going to have 2x and a negative x gives me a positive 1x. Positive 5 and a positive 4 gives me a value of plus 9. So that'll be my, my subtraction property. My next property is going to be multiplication. So now I'm going to have fg of x. And, and be very careful. Whenever you see no operation in the middle, we automatically assume it to be multiplication. We're going to learn something later on. It's going to be a composition. And that's going to look a little similar to multiplication. It's actually going to be f open circle g like this of x. So it's actually not equal to, this does not equal to f of x times g of x. So those two are not equal. So be very careful about that. So this will equal to f of x times g of x, g of x like such. So now we will take our first function, which is this guy 2x plus 5, which I'm going to keep here in red. And then I'm going to multiply it. I'm going to multiply it by 
x minus 4. So we're going to multiply it by x minus 4. So this is where I'm going to have to use my foiling property. So I have to multiply my first times my first. So I'm going to get 2x squared. My first times my last, which will give me my negative 8x. My last times my first over here, which will give me a value of plus 10x. And then I'm going to multiply my last times my last, which will give me a value of minus 20. And then I'm going to combine my similar terms, and I'm going to get 2x squared minus 8x plus 10x gives me a value of positive 2x. And then I'm going to factor out a 20. Some of you may see at this point that you can factor out a GCF here, and you can. And you can factor out a GCF of a value of 2. And you're going to be left with x squared plus x minus 10. And I would not consider one more right than the other. I guess the factoring out is considered more simplified. But at this point, I would, I would not be upset if you left it in the form of 2x squared plus 2x, 2x squared plus 2x minus 20. But you could also have, have multiplied or factored out that 2, and that would be sufficient and correct as well. So our last property, so we have our first property, second property, third property, and I bet you can guess it's going to be the division, which is going to be our fourth property. And that's going to be f divided by g, written in this notation as such, of x. And this will be equal to f of x divided by g of x. And this is going to be provided that g of x does not equal to 0. Because remember, we can never have a 0 in our denominator. So they have to include that little little portion at the end that says g of x cannot equal to 0. g of x cannot equal to 0. So our bottom function can never be equal to 0. Plugging this in here, plugging this in, we're going to have f of x, which is again that 2x plus 5, that 2x plus 5. And we're going to divide it by, we're going to divide it by x minus 4. And this cannot be simplified any further. This will be our final solution. Very patriotic here because it's just going to be equal to 2x plus 5 all over x minus 4. So these are going to be the four different ways that we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. I'm going to go ahead and try something a little bit more, more elaborate here. And we're going to plug in a value. So we'll use an example. An example. And we'll say given f of x is equal to square root of x plus 1. And g of x is equal to, uh, we'll say x plus 8. x plus 8. I want us to find f plus g of 0. Let's find f plus g of 0. So we could go about this two different ways, very, very, almost dichotomously. It's, it's just two different paths, whatever you feel most comfortable with. This, by definition, is going to be f of 0 plus g of 0, f of 0 plus g of 0. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to find f of 0 first by plugging in 0 everywhere I see an x in f. So I'm going to have square root of 0 plus 1, which in fact gives me square root of 1, which is 1. And then I'm going to find g of 0, which is equal to 1 plus, I'm sorry, 0 plus 8, which is a value of 8. So now f of 0 is equal to a value of 1 plus g of 0, which is a value of 8. So this is, in fact, a value of 9. So you can split it up like such. Or you can go ahead and separate this, f plus g of 0, into, into the square root of 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 8. And, and you could write it like this if you'd like to. And either way, it's going to give you the exact same answer. So there is no difference in the way that you want to go about doing that. So how about you guys take a second and you guys figure out what f divided by. Actually, let's try something a little bit different. Let's try g divided by f of 3 g divided by f of 3. So applying this, we're going to have g of 3 divided by f of 3. g of 3 is going to be equal to 3 plus 8 all over f of 3. We're going to plug in that 3 everywhere we see next and divide. So we're going to have square root of 3 plus 1, which gives me 11 over square root of 4. And 11 over square root of 4, square root of 4 is equal to a value of 2. So we get a value of 11 halves. So in this section, we're just going to work through these problems systematically, applying basic algebra now to functions.